Hey, thank you so much. And I want to thank everyone for being here today. You're here for a very noble purpose. We're trying to make sure that we do not create an apartheid government here in the state of Texas. I'm so enthused to see so many good people of different faiths, different religions, different backgrounds that are here today. Because maybe it is a religious community that can make a difference. Because my friends, let me lay it out to you where we are today. We must go inside this building. We must convince the grandsons and granddaughters of the Confederacy to take their feet and their knees off of the necks of people of African descent and Latinos. My friends, they must be asked this question. The question is, will you stand with Strom Thurmond, Lester Maddox, and George Wallace, or will you stand with good people like Bill Ratliff, like Everett Dirksen, like Lyndon Baines Johnson? My friends, we're here in the spirit of that great American John Lewis who believe that deep inside of you there's something good in everybody. So we must go there with the spirit of love and try to convince them of the errors of their ways. But I want to say here that what we must understand and explain to the legislators, because I'm sure that they will tell you that this bill does not contain any bias, but it does. I don't have enough time to go here and stand and tell you all of the reasons why it is biased. One of the points I want to make, though, is that if you have an issue with some kind of, a, some kind of conduct of an election official, why don't you make for additional training or provide some different avenue instead of criminalizing it? Texas is reaching back to its roots. And what we must understand is when Texas decided to have a poll tax what did the legislature say the reason why they adopted a poll tax? For election integrity. When Texas decided to adopt a law that said that black people could not vote in the Democratic primary in 1923, what did they say? Election integrity. What do they say today? Election integrity. We know what it is. We have to expose it for what it is. And so when we go and talk to them, don't listen to any of the nonsense. We have to reach out and maybe, maybe appeal to the goodness of their hearts. But if we cannot do that, we also, of course, must hope that there is a second Emancipation Proclamation or something akin to that from Joe Manchin and the Democrats in Washington, D.C. Because unless you issue that kind of declaration, I'm afraid of what's going to happen. So Texas has moved forward. We've made great strides. We've got people in different parties and different races, et cetera, that come up here and work together. They're trying to change that. They're, they're trying to change that in perpetuity so that for generations, for generations, we will have 35 to 40 percent of this population controlling the outcome of the elections. Black people, brown people, persons with disabilities, and women need to share in power like everybody else. But this, w this bill has provisions that are anti-black that are anti-brown, that are anti-disability, and that are anti-female. And we have to understand that there's specific provisions that do that when the data comes in. So you've got, you're doing the Lord's work today. I look forward to hopefully seeing that we can make some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, uh, steps today that might move the legislature away from where they're going. And uh, one final comment, I, uh, I hope I haven't gone over, but we have to applaud the legislators in Washington, D.C., okay? We have to applaud them, okay? Because they did the only thing they could do, and they're the only thing standing between us and Jim Crow, too. Thank you very much.